this has started. Oh, let me minimize that. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be a hair tutorial. Only, as you can see from the screen, it's not going to be regularly how people do it, where they draw the base on the avatar, etc., teach you all that stuff. Because <coughs> I am horrible at drawing hair bases, and me attempting to show you via base would be horrific. So I'll just show you the techniques I use, and hopefully that'll be something to learn from. First thing I do, of course, well, that anyone does, is draw a base. When I draw mine, I like to use 80% opacity, so that, oh crap, gotta turn the pressure sensitivity off, so that this will be mouse friendly. Okay, so that when I draw, I can layer it over each other, like that, because it just makes the flow of the hair lead. I don't want it on the angle, I want it straight up, so I'm going to do it like that, because I want to actually show you guys a portion about the hair falling and etc. Alright, so you see it's layered pretty nicely now. And the next thing I do is to actually get strands. To get strands, I use the smudge tool and I put it at 80, 90 percent. You can play with it and see what you want. And what this does is it makes the smudge really extreme where you can do things like that. Oh crap. That's another thing. I guess that's good that that happened. When you're smudging, you have to be careful about overlapping, because you can do this and ruin the whole hair, but generally you can get your strands and pull them right out of there. You see how I'm getting those nice little oh, rat tail-like strands? You can use a bigger brush, smaller brush. I prefer smaller because you can play with the strands a little more, whereas with a bigger one you're doing this. And yeah, but with the smaller one you can play with it a little more. See what I could do. See how tiny that one is? Oh crap. Ah, that looks fun. And generally get motion into your hair. The biggest thing about hair is to get it to move. Hair moves. Wind pushes it, etc. Unless you got six million pounds of gel in it. And if you do, bravo. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyway, that's our little <coughs> bottom strandies of hair. Next thing I do is actually blending. I go and get a darker portion of the hair and start to blend. Before I blend, I have a little tip. As you can tell probably from this, I'm doing white hair. And if you can't tell, then you're probably one of the people that does this. When you're making white or silver hair, don't start with white. You're setting yourself up for failure. White kind of, I don't want to say messes it up, but it makes it really hard for you to actually achieve that silvery hair look. So, just a word of warning. And now we're about to blend, my opacity goes down to 23. I work at 23% opacity. You can work at any opacity. I know people that work at 15, I know people that work at 30, work at 60. It is completely up to the person. When you're doing this, um, when you're doing this, it's best to look at a reference to see, you know, which direction the hair goes in because that's what you're blending. You're blending the shadows that show that direction that the hair is falling. Then you're blending it in so that it doesn't look as much like lines on the hair, as much as shadows. I'm a really sloppy blender. That's kind of my thing. I really like sloppy lines in my blending. I don't know why. <laughs> but if you want a blending tutorial, I will... Fine. There are a couple on YouTube that I know about that are really awesome. There are a bunch of different ways to blend. Some people blend with the paintbrush, some people blend with smudge, some people blend with blur. It's completely up to you. You know what? In fact, I'm not going to link any because then you'll think that's one I like. Go find one. Though I might link Bedlam's or Entangled's, more than likely. But there are lots of different techniques. Look them up. I swear you'll find one that works for you. Okay, now that we have the shadows in there, we can put the shine. Now this is when you start getting a little closer towards the white, but we're still not hitting that white yet. Now with the shine, you can either put it, if you want a kind of anime-ish hair, you can put it like in between there. You want hair with the deeper shadows, you put it in between where the shadows don't hit. And you see that makes the middle part stand out and these sink in. Or you can do the halo method which is putting it like in the middle where the most shine would hit. Obviously this isn't where the most shine would hit in real hair, but again, this is a mini tutorial. So, and then blend that in. Now the reason why I'm 
blending so sloppily right now is because all of this is going to be covered in the next step. This is just kind of like an underpainting so that you generally get where your shadows and stuff are. It helps a lot. Okay, for the next portion of it, you can use one of the regular default brushes. I went and downloaded these hair brushes. I think it's the Ataha Sun brushes. I'm really not sure. I'll link those though. And what you need to do for your settings is if you're at a low opacity, go back to 100. And in your brush dynamics, set the pressure to opacity and size, and set the opacity of the brush to 80%. If you didn't get all those instructions, you'd probably best rewind the video, because I'm not going to say all that again. And what you're doing now is you're going to pick a point, follow the flow of the hair, all the way to the end, stroke path. And you see I have stroke with paint tool selected, and emulate brush dynamics, then stroke. And you see there's that light, wispy line of hair. Now what you just did was this. The brush dynamics are basically how your brush works. Which if, let's see, I have a tablet plugged in so I'll show you. You see my brush dynamics are set to the pressure chooses the opacity and the size. So I can do this. See that? Now, when you use the pen tool, you can program the pen tool to still go by pressure making opacity and size still with that, so you still get that realistic hair strand effect. Also, by having the opacity at 80%, if you maybe make a little mistake, it's not as severe because you have to go over it a couple times. Now, what I like to do from here is I actually like to lighten it up. I use the lightest color for my strands, oddly enough, and just go back in and stroke. Oh, crap. May I make sure you have the right brush selected? That's a free lesson for you. <laughs> and go back in there and just go over all of my lines that I've made through this whole thing and just stroke over it and get that shape of that flow, that shape that flow, anything I want from that hair. I learned this that technique from, well, 9 times out of 10 if you're watching this, you know who Maddie is, so <laughs> if you don't, He's an amazing editor. Anywho, let's see. But you keep on going generally like that. And you see the hair is starting to look a lot better now because you're covering up those crazy strands that you did with your smudge. You're covering up the crazy blending you saw me do. And because of the shadows and stuff, you generally know where the hair falls. And you see the hair looks a lot more white than it would if you started off with white. I'm just saying. No, I'm not trying to be rude, I promise. I just, that's an easy thing to mess up. And it sucks because so, so many people make beautiful white hair. And then other people try to do it and they don't start with gray and then they like, oh, the white doesn't, white hair sucks, it doesn't work. White hair works, you just have to work with it. It's a little tricky. But, yeah. I'm gonna leave it like that, but you see, now we have hair. I'm gonna clip off this messiness at the top and crop it so maybe you'll get a better idea. You see that? That's hair right there. Now what you can do is you can also go back in if you don't like seeing those little choppies. I would usually put more hair to cover that, but I usually do these strands on a different layer than that base so that I can go back in and like smudge the heck out of that so no one can see it. Because the thing with being a mouse user is you have to hide your crap a little harder. You see I can't do it because it's all in one layer. But with a mouse being a mouse user you have to hide your crap a little harder. It's just a little harder to hide the obvious mouse stuff. But other than that, it's about the same stuff. Anyway, I think that's it. Hope this was helpful to you in some small way, and good luck!